Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Marburger back with Alvin Ho, and we are up to chapter 10. It's called Facing the Music. Remember what happened last time with uh, Johnny Astro? Not good. My dad is not only a gentleman, but he is the man, which is a lot like being the dad, which means he can handle quite a bit. He can eat wasabi without crying. He can watch a scary movie without flinching. He can carry a big heavy rock straight across the yard and set it down where my mom wants it. And he can carry it back again if my mom changes her mind. When he's had a bad day, my dad can play the piano like crazy until he is his old self again. Or if he's had a truly horrible day, he can curse a wild blue streak like William Shakespeare. Sorrow on thee, thou spongy, onion-eyed, hunger-monger, my dad might say, and then he'd write it down. Or, clean thine ears, thou lumpish bump bailey. Every time he thinks of a new curse, he writes it on a little piece of paper, and he puts it in a tin. Cursing like Shakespeare always makes him feel better. Well, that's my dad. He's the man. He can handle just about anything. So right after school, I put Johnny Astro back where it belonged, and I slipped in between Calvin and Annabelle, where I belonged, and we waited with Lucy by the window for our dad to come home. Are you sure dad said it was yours? asked Calvin. Maybe we should just have your funeral now, Annabelle whispered loudly. But I was in luck. When our dad finally stepped through the door, he was in an unusually cheerful mood. Hello, everyone, he said cheerfully. Silence. What's up? Silence. How about some more fun with Johnny Astro today? Nobody said anything. My dad whistled across the living room. Cheerfully, he reached for Johnny Astro. Cheerfully, Johnny Astro came down. Really flies, said the box. Fly your spacecraft anywhere. Then my dad opened the box. His whistling stopped. His breathing stopped. His feet stopped. Then he staggered backwards. What is this? He wailed. Johnny Astro, what happened to you? He cried. Then he really cried. He put his head in his hands and his shoulders went up and down. Here's a picture of their dad kind of having a moment. Mm. Carefully, I put my arm around my dad. Crying is really great. Everything is better afterward, usually. But this was not usual. This was the best toy ever made. What bootless, toad-spotted bladder did this? My dad howled. I'll see thee hanged. Gulp. What happened to my Johnny Astro? He screeched. And my mom rushed in to see what was going on. Alvin, my dad bellowed. My chin quivered. My face wrinkled. Dear, you know Alvin can't speak when he's frightened, my mom said calmly. This isn't about speaking, my dad said. His teeth were clenched. It's about respecting other people's things. I wanted to cry, but I couldn't. I had to save it for when things got really rough, which I could see coming faster than a meteorite falling from the sky and aiming straight for me. Maybe it was an accident, squeaked Annabelle. An accident, howled my dad. How can an accident happen on the top shelf? Maybe he needed a good show and tell, said Calvin. And the accident happened on the bus. What? roared my dad. It was time. I began to cry. Crying is really great. It is a good way of softening the blow coming to you, and it helps if the tears run off your chin and you slobber a little bit and your eyes get puffy and you're a real mess. Oh, Alvin, you poor thing, said my mom, which really helps too. She put her arms around me. If lightning struck, it would hit her first, which is probably one of the rules of being a mom. This is more than an accident, said my dad. He held up the newly repaired and heavily bandaged Johnny Astro. 
Maybe the guys tried to fix it at recess, said Calvin. My dad turned seaweed green. Then he turned sea foamy. Then he turned pomegranate and then grapefruit and then orange. And normally I like orange is the color of tigers and sherbet and sunsets and mangoes, but I didn't like this orange. It was danger alert orange, which is only helpful around construction sites. Annabelle and Calvin stared with their mouths wide open, getting busted is the best spectacular sport around our house, except for when you're the one getting busted. My Johnny Astro, my dad wailed. He put the cover back on it and hugged the box sadly, and then he marched off to the piano like he always does when he's had a hard day, and he played like a wild, savage beast. My dad learned to play the piano when he was about my age, so now when he plays, he sounds like Brahms, even though his fingers are as thick as bratwurst. As long as he was playing, I was okay, and the longer he played, the more okay I was going to be, because as we all know, music is medicine. The more you take, the better you feel. Finally, he stopped. Alvin needs piano lessons, said my dad. It will keep him busy, it will give him confidence, it will change his life. My dad paused. It might even give him a good show and tell, he added. And so it was decided that I would take piano lessons, which was really marvelous. I was expecting a grounding, but instead I was going to face the music. Thanks, Dad, I cried. My dad said nothing. I wanted to say something else, something that would make my dad feel good for taking it easy on me, but I didn't know how or what else to say until I thought of something. Someday when I'm old and beastly and have sausages for fingers, I will play the piano just like you, dad, instead of punishing my kids for destroying my Johnny Astros. Hair grew on the backs of my dad's hands. He looked strangely beastly again. I think he needed more music to soothe his soul. Dun, dun, dun. That was the end of chapter 10. Well, wow, his dad handled that pretty well, actually, I think. I guess the piano really does help him. So hopefully Alvin gets lessons and he gets as good as his dad, right? All right, that's the end of chapter 10.